My dear students, today we will be focusing on a very important topic from general surgery and it is basically a topic from urology. Schistosomiasis happens to be my focus today. So as evident from the name, you are well aware that there are so many questions asked from this disease entity. We will be going through some of the most high yield, some of the most important points and questions asked from your examination viewpoint. So as far as schistosomiasis is concerned, we would be talking about schistosomiasis pertaining to the urinary tract. So as far as schistosomiasis is concerned, you have to remember that after the multiple species of schistosomiasis, we have got this schistosomia hematobonium, which is predominantly an organism which would be present within the vesical venous plexus. And as far as the surgical anatomy of the vesical venous plexus is concerned, you have to remember that the vesical venous plexus is a well-established venous plexus around the urinary bladder and the prostate. Now, how does the infection occur? We have got the microbiological characteristics present within this group of organisms that there are those infected cercari and they happen to be very important in transmission of these diseases as they penetrate the skin. So infected cercari penetrate the skin and they mature into what we call as schistosomules and these schistosomules get into the various venous and the lymphatic plexus in the body and then from here they migrate to the lungs and the liver. As far as urinary schistosomiasis is concerned, we have the same cycle, infected cercaria penetrating the skin and maturing into schistosomules and then going through the venous, venous and lymphatic plexus to the liver and the lungs from where they migrate to the venous plexus surrounding the bladder the vesical venous plexus and in here what they do they incite a granulomatous host reaction which we will be just discussing later as far as clinical symptomatology is concerned so this is something about the microbiological transmission by which schistosomiasis of the urinary bladder occurs now what does a patient present usually a patient presents with frequency of urination he or she may present with dysuria or hematuria but the classic features of intermittent painless terminal hematuria happens to be classic about schistosomiasis intermittent painless and terminal hematuria these happen to be the more common symptomatologies, frequency, dysuria, and hematuria. But going ahead, we can be having obstructive pathology in the form of hydronephrosis, and in case there is a high degree, the presence of hydroureter as well. Enlarged kidneys and enlarged ureter, hydroureter, and hydronephrosis. In addition to that, we can be having a fibrosis as a compensatory reaction to the disease. And this clinical entity also tends to be a very important prelude to the cancers. And squamous cell carcinomas of the urinary bladder happen to be a very important late consequence of schistosomiasis. Now, in addition to that, how do we diagnose the condition? The diagnosis is basically and preferentially by means of serological tests, schistosomial antibody tests, and we can also have the examination of the tissue samples, the microbiological examination of the tissue samples, which can give a direct clue to the presence of schistosomia hematobody infection. 
Now, as far as the cystoscopic findings are concerned, we have been asked this question many a times. What happened to be the main cystoscopic findings of urinary bladder in case of this disease entity? You have to remember that there is this characteristic frequently asked the presence of pseudotubercles. The presence of pseudotubercles is a very important fact. Cystoscopic finding in schistosomiasis. In action, we can be having nodules. The presence of pseudotubercles along with nodules happens to be characteristic of schistosomiasis. Then we have got this question very frequently asked, sandy patches. Sandy patches are a feature of schistosomies and what they mean they are dead calcified ova which resemble small patches of sand. In action we can be having ulceration at a later stage or an obstruction in the form of a cancer squamous cell carcinoma developing at a later stage. So the presence of pseudotubercles, the presence of nodules, the presence of sandy patches, the presence of ulceration and Unfortunately, sometimes the carcinogenic potential, the presence of squamous cell carcinoma in schistosomia hematoboidin infections. The drug which we give is the prizoquintil, and prizoquintil happens to be the drug of choice for schistosomiasis. And in case of certain advanced conditions, we need to do a surgical manipulation, and surgery is done in case of urinary calculi, in case schistosomiasis have urinary calculi associated with it. Also the presence of strictures and fibrosis and definitely in case of cancers. So the prelude to surgical intervention is urinary calculi, strictures, fibrosis and cancer development. These are very important points about schistosomiasis and I hope that you will be benefited by this condensed class of mine about schistosomia hematoboidin. Thanks for